Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and I have got the new Ad my Codex. Courtesy of Games Workshop, I got an early copy so I could check it out, and boy, I have been checking it out. And now we're going to go through it, because there's so many changes that you kind of have to go through it with a fine tooth comb to catch them all. Um, so let's do that. <laughs> Here we are, Adeptus Mechanicus Codex for 9th edition. Ba -ba -ba -ba. The Admix are the engineers of the Imperium. For those who are new to this sort of thing. Okay, so at the beginning of this book, we are going to see all sorts of lore about the Adeptus Mechanicus. And also now specifying the holy orders uh, more particularly. I do like the fact that they have the weapons layout. Um, for brand new players, you now don't have to question what it is that you are um, assembling your model with. There's all the pictures for your various weapons. We've got uh, information on the Warzone Metallica, which is currently ongoing in the lore, the Arcane and the Ancient, Legio Cybernetica, so th all of the backgrounds for the various models that you'll be seeing inside your games. We have Mars, the birthplace of the Cult Mechanicus, and Belisarius Cole, our current Arc Magus Dominus, prime conduit of the Omnissiah. Mm hmm. We have the various uh, dogmas from the various forge worlds of the Adeptus Mechanicus, Lucius and Agrippina and Stygis Eight and Mars was one as well, and Graia and Metallica and Ryza. And not only that, we also have the color schemes. If you wanted to follow the color schemes of your um, your forge world, so that's. All nicely done. And we've got some little Forge Worlds, some less known ones, even a one who hasn't found his own Forge World yet because it was destroyed by Tyranids, even though. And some more history. Uh, we have got the various models that you can play in the Admech and uh, where their symbols go in some cases. Showing off their pretty color schemes. Bum, bum. Look at that art. It's a very nice artwork. The ad make look great. And now, the rules. Because there are multiple changes. Uh, for each detachment in your army with the Knight of the Cog ability, which all ad mech detachments have, uh, you can select one quest or mechanicus super heavy auxiliary detachment in your army models in that detachment gain the knight of the cog keyword so that is the first mention of quest or mechanicus which is knights that are fielded that's imperial knights fielded with the admech and now when you are admech, you have to choose a dogma, either your own or one of their creation. Let's go through them, shall we? Mars. It used to be, each time you randomly determine which canticle of the Omnissiah is being canted, roll two dice instead of one. All units with this dogma receive the benefit of both results instead of just the result of the first dice. If a duplicate is rolled, no additional canticle is canted this turn. That's what it used to be. Changed now. Now, Skitari units with this dogma gain the canticles of the Omnissiah ability. Why is this relevant? Because the canticles of the Omnissiah ability, which used to be for all Admech, are now only for non Skitari units. Except for Mars. Mars can have canticles of the Omnissiah for Skitari. All right. Each time a unit with this dogma is selected to shoot or fight, you can reroll one hit roll when resolving that unit's attacks. So that is your stat 
your basic bonus for having Mars as your dogma. And then we also have a warlord trait available. You do not need to choose the warlord trait and you do not need to choose the, um, the artifact associated, but you can if you wish to. And the warlord trait is panegyric procession. In your command phase, you can select one friendly Mars cult, uh, cult mechanicus core unit within six inches of this warlord. If you do so, then select one canticle. This can be one that has already been active for your army until the start of your next command phase. Both this warlord and that unit benefit from the selected canticle instead of the one active in your army. And then we have the Arcana Mechanicum, the Red Axe, which is, uh, which improves on Omniscient Axe. And the Omniscient Axe had, uh, the Omniscient Axe itself has improved. It used to be a Strength 1 weapon, and now it is a Strength 2 weapon. And this one is better even beyond that. Wrath of Mars. Uh, the stratagem says one command point. Use the stratagem in your shooting phase when a Mars unit is selected to shoot until the end of the phase. Each time a model in that unit makes an attack, an unmodified wound roll of six inflicts one mortal wound on the target in addition to any normal damage. That's for one command point or two if the unit has a power rating of 11 or more. La -da 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 -da. Now, Lucius. It used to be Lucius had, when making saving throws, units with this dogma treat enemy attacks with an armor pen of minus one as having an armor pen of zero. So that has changed. Each time an attack with a damage curse stick of one allocated to a model with this dogma, add one to the armor saving throw made against that attack. Now, it's similar because adding one to the armor saving throw is like reducing armor penetration. However, it's more specified to a damage characteristic of one. Um, and that was not specified previously, so that would have gone down in ability. However, it has an additional ability now, uh, which is add three to the range characteristic of range weapons that models with this dogma are equipped with. And the warlord trait is, in your command phase, select one Lucius core unit with ni within nine inches of this warlord until the start of your next command phase. Each time an attack is made against that unit in an, un an unmodified wound roll of one to three for that attack fails, irrespective of any abilities that that weapon or the model making the attack may have, which is quite nice. It um, cancels strength basically of your opponents since one to three on a wound roll means it's as if their strength is equal to the core unit's toughness and since the core units are generally not very tough this is nice certainly nice and you do it without any cost just it has to be a core unit within nine inches of your warlord so that is nice and Arcanum Mechanicum, the Solar Flare. It is a artifact for a Lucius model only. Once per battle in your movement phase, the bearer can use this relic. If it does so, the bearer's unit and up to one friendly core unit within three inches of the bearer can be removed from the battlefield and set back up anywhere on the battlefield more than nine inches away from any enemy models. If two units are set up, set back up on the battlefield using the relic both units must be placed wholly within six inches of each other so teleporting your guys around uh it's only once for battle but that can certainly make a difference so that is cool um probably i i generally go for going particularly if i was first and had this ability i would go for um, the objective, because getting an early objective uh, is really handy, but of course you decide. Uh, maybe you could wait until one of their, uh, their special characters is all alone, and then you could do it. Um, getting into a strategic location as soon as possible is probably how I would use it, but you let me know how you would use it. 
And now the stratagem for Lucius, Legio Teleportarium, one command point. Use a stratagem before the battle during the declare reserves and transport step. A step if you were playing a mission without those use stratagem during deployment instead select one lucius unit excluding vehicle units from your army you can set that unit in a teleportarium instead of setting it up on the battlefield and again this is before the battle if you do so then in the reinforcement steps of one of your movement phases you can set up that unit on the battlefield that is more than nine inches away from any enemy models you can use the stratagem once unless you're playing strike force which you can use it twice or onslaught you can use it three times so again lucius can teleport teleport it's uh twice of sorts now agrippina so staunch defenders staunch defenders it used to be when firing overwatch units with this dogma hit on a roll of five plus instead of six plus irrespective modifiers now that was created uh before they uh adjusted when you could use overwatch so it's nice probably for agrippina models uh to switch it to something new and it now says each time a model with this dogma makes a range attack that targets a unit within half range the armor pen uh, of the attack is improved by one which is nice each time an enemy unit uh, declares a charge against a unit with this dogma if this unit is not within engagement range of any enemy units it can hold steady or set to defend which is uh, nice better than having to use a command point for uh, firing overwatch now warlord trait verse of vengeance in your command phase select one core unit within six inches of this warlord each time a model in that unit is destroyed by an attack made by an enemy model roll d6 on a four plus do not remove it it gets to shoot once with its um as if it were in the shooting phase or it can attack once as if it were in the fight phase and then you remove the model after that has happened. Do, 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 do. Arcanum Mechanicum, the Eye of Zelexum. And it is an Agrippina model only, of course, at the start of your shooting phase. Select one enemy vehicle unit within 18 inches of the bear. Until the end of the phase, the bear gains the following ability, which is an aura. Uh, while friendly Agrippina core or Agrippina Catafron Servitors units within six inches of this model each time a model in that unit makes an attack that targets the selected vehicle unit you can reroll the wound roll which is also nice because um it might be harder to uh to hit something since a vehicle in general is going to be much stronger than a core unit so you're only going to be hitting on fives or sixes or sixes and uh rerolling the wound roll is useful I don't know if it's better than some of the other arcanum we will find out but it's useful to have your options there indentured machines one command point uses stratagem before the battle select one agrippina catafron servitors unit by the way the uh, catafron servitors are now bikers just bear that in mind as we're going through they're not infantry they're bikers they don't have objectives secured therefore because they are no longer infantry all right uh, use a stratagem before the battle. Uh, select one Agrippina Catafron Servitors unit from your army. Add one to the toughness characteristic of models in that unit. A unit can only be selected for the stratagem once. You can only use this stratagem once unless you are playing a strike force where you can use it twice or an onslaught where you can use it three times. Do let me know if you are playing any of these dogmas what you think about these changes so far. Greya. Greya used to be roll a d6 each time a model with this dogma is slain or flees. On a 6, that model refuses to yield. Either that model is not slain and has one wound remaining, or that model does not flee. However, uh, Agrippina units with this dogma cannot fall back unless there is a friendly character on the battlefield. Now, 
it e so this is it's still quite similar but now it uses comet attrition tests so it used to be on a six the model is not slain and does not flee now it's each time a combat attrition test is taken for a unit with this dogma it is automatically passed so you're going to lose um for each morale phase uh for each morale test you fail you will lose a model but uh your combat attrition test is always passed which i think is more powerful than what it used to be uh, because it was only on a six that it wouldn't that it wouldn't run away now yes you do have to wait until your morale test fails yes you do are going to be losing one model but that's it that's it that definitely seems better to me also each time a model with this dogma I would lose a wound as a result of a mortal wound roll 1d6 on a 5 plus that wound is not lost so that seems like an improvement for Graya. only are you losing one model on failed morale tests is seems pretty good all right warlord trait mantra of discipline uh, in your opponent's charge phase at the start of the heroic intervention step Select one Greya core unit within nine inches of this warlord until the end of the phase. If that unit is within six inches horizontally and five inches vertically of any enemy unit, it is eligible to perform the heroic interventions as if it were a character unit, which is very interesting. Very cool. It has to be within uh, nine inches of the warlord, but that could easily be done. So that'd be cool. Each time a model in that unit makes a heroic intervention move, it can move up to six inches. So that's that's neat. That could be pretty pretty techy. Of course, it all depends on what your opponent does, but uh, it's neat. I like it. Arcanum Mechanicum, the Cerebral Technometer. Uh, for a tech priest only, add three inches to the range of the bearer's aura ability to a maximum of nine each time the bearer uses an ability in your command phase that specifies a range you can add three to the range of that ability i don't know whether that's um good enough for you to replace it with um the other arcanum mechanicum that you could possibly use i don't know um but maybe i guess it all depends i mean adding three inches to the range of of your Dominus his ability it could certainly be useful but useful enough to get rid of one of your other artifacts not sure steel mind iron logic one command point use this stratagem in your opponent's psychic phase when an enemy psyker attempts to manifest a psychic power within 18 inches of any gray units from your army roll 1d6 on a four plus that psychic power is denied i would be totally using that yeah one command point try and uh um cancel out a psychic power i'd i'd go for it 50 percent chance 50 percent chance to cancel out their power um for one command point i go for it you let me know if you would stygies eight this is mine and even with all the changes i'll be sticking with stygies eight but i definitely have to be considering a change in some way okay so stygies eight used to be very straightforward if your opponent it just used to be your opponent must subtract one from the hit rolls when shooting at units with this dogma if they're more than 12 inches away um it didn't have to do with cover and it worked lovely now it's a bit different now and also vehicles have extended uh to 18 inches instead of 12 inches so specifically each time a range attack targets a vehicle unit excluding units with the core keyword uh, with this dogma if the attacker is more than 18 inches away then the target is treated as having the benefits of dense cover against that attack and dense cover is minus one to hit uh, each time a range attack targets a unit uh, excluding vehicles without the core keyword 
With this dogma, if the attacker is more than 12 inches away, then the target is treated as having the benefits of dense cover against that attack. So it's gone down in how strong it is. But it does also have this little addition. Each time a unit with this dogma declares a charge, none of the targets of that charge can hold, steady, or set to defend. Um, gives it a little bit of a uh, melee bonus where it didn't really have it before. Um, other than the fact that they were protected until they got within 12 inches of you. So still, it's enough that I would happily continue playing them. Uh, Warlord Trait, Veiled Hunter. At the start of the first battle round, you can select up to two friendly Stygius 8 units, wholly within your deployment zone. Remove those units from the battlefield, then set them up anywhere on the battlefield that is wholly within your deployment zone. If the mission uses the Strategic Reserves rules, any of those units can be placed into Strategic Reserves without having to spend any additional campaign points. Regardless of how many units are already in Strategic Reserves, if both players have abilities that redeploy units, roll off, the winner chooses who redeploys deploys those units first. So start of the first battle round, all of your opponent's stuff has been deployed so you can pick up your units and switch them around to uh, for them to make more sense depending on what your opponent laid down where, which is, all, which is handy. All right, Arcanum Mechanicum, the Omnissiah's Hand. Stygis 8 model only, once per battle, at the end of the fight phase, you can use this relic. If you do so, roll 1d6 for each enemy unit within 12 inches on the bearer. On a 2-5, to five, that enemy unit suffers 1 mortal wound. On a 6, that enemy unit suffers d3 mortal wounds. Now, previously, when I read this, I or I still had my Atacadusus of the Arkenland. That artifact is gone, so you never know. Maybe I will have this as a... Um, have this as something on its enemy unit, each unit within 12 inches of the bear, but I don't generally um, have my models that close to enemies. <laughs> so maybe, maybe not. I will keep reading and figure it out. Now, their stratagem is one command point, clandestine infiltration. Use a stratagem during deployment. Select one Stygis 8 core infantry unit from your army. When you set up that unit, it can be set up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than 9 inches away from the enemy deployment zone and any enemy models. Now, I would, um, core infantry, I would quite likely use that. Uh, you're no longer restricted to your own deployment zone, so I could certainly see myself using that just just checking something though. My server sulfur hounds are not. In, no, they're cavalry. I figured that. Yeah. I thought so. So, server sulfur hounds can't do it, but the vanguard can. So that's who I would choose for, um, for that. I'd choose the vanguard and then charge in or just steal objectives. Either or, perfectly, perfectly happy with that. Okay, Ryza. Ryza used to be, you can reroll wounds of one in the fight phase for units with this dogma, which is, which is nice, but now it is, um, each time a model with this dogma makes a melee attack, if it made a charge for move, uh, was charged or performed a heroic intervention this turn, add one to the attack's rune roll, which is actually pretty good. Um, it's pretty similar to rerolling rune rolls of one, but I think it's it's better because it immediately helps you. The rerolling rune rolls of one, well, I'm sure y'all know how double ones happen, but that wouldn't be the case here. You immediately have a a plus one, so that would be better. I think that would be an improvement. Also, they have an additional bonus. Add one to charge rolls made for units with this dogma. So, um, a little, uh, nice little bonus there. A little bit more likely for you to get into range. 
little bit. Warlord trait, citation in savagery. At the start of the fight phase, select one friendly Ryza core unit within six inches of this warlord until the start of the next fight phase. Each time a model in that unit makes a melee attack, the armor pin of the attack is improved by one. Certainly nice. Yep. Perfectly nice. Uh, six inches within, uh, within your warlord, so uh, choose your warlord carefully, um, but increasing the armor penetration is always nice. Now, Arcanum Mechanicum Weapon 99. It is improving a Volkite Blaster. Um, there's so many of these with the improvements that I'm not going to read through what exactly they improve on. A Volkite Blaster is improved. Plasma Specialist set. Use this stratagem in the shoot phase. Two command points. When a rise unit is selected to shoot until the end of the phase, each time a model in that unit makes an attack with a plasma weapon, add one to the damage characteristic of that attack. So plasma weapons. Um, for two command points, I guess it could get pretty nasty. So if you're using a lot of plasma weapons, two command points, one additional damage. Metallica. Metallica says, it said it used to be if a unit with this dogma advances, it can ignore the penalty for firing assault weapons and treat all rapid fire weapons as armed with assault weapons until the end of the turn. All right. Now it says models with this dogma do not suffer the penalty to hit rolls incurred for firing assault weapons in the same turn that they advance. So that's the same. And models with this dogma do not suffer the penalty to hit rolls incurred for firing heavy weapons in the same turn that they unit. So that is an improvement there. And while an enemy is within engagement range of a unit from your army with this dogma, that enemy unit is treated as being at below half strength, which um, means that their uh, their command, their combat attrition rolls are going to be harder to succeed. Uh, so that's always nice. I think that's an improvement from what it was uh, for those who used rapid fire weapons. Um, and you're sad that they can no longer be assault weapons. I'm pretty certain there's a stratagem that changes them. We're going to get into that and see. Uh, at the end of the movement phase, this is a warlord trait, a tribute of emphatic veneration. At the end of your movement phase, select one enemy unit within 12 inches of this warlord until the start of your next command phase. Each time a model in that unit makes an attack, subtract one from that attack's hit roll, which is quite nice. Within 12, end of your movement. Wait, till the start of your next command phase. Okay, yeah, so it's their turn too. Perfect. Um, minus one to hit, that's powerful. I very much like that. Arcanum Mechanicum, the adamantine arm. Uh, Metallica model only the bear is equipped with this relic in addition to other weapons. It has the following profile. Um, it's a melee weapon. It has a strength of three times. So generally that would be a 12. AP minus three, four damage. Each time the bear fights, no more than one attack can be made with this weapon. Each time an attack is made with this weapon, add one to that attack's hit roll. A lot of your units are three plus or four plus weapon skill. So, um, this will more often or not with a strength of 12, uh, this should hit and deal for damage. Now, AP is irrelevant if you're dealing with, um, invuln saves and would be invuln saves all over the place, but, uh, it's good. It's good. Uh, for those who would be playing Metallica, is it good enough that you would choose it? I'm curious. Do let me know in the description below, or in the comments below. Defeating Assault, one command point. Use the stratagem in your shooting phase when a Metallica unit from your army is selected to shoot. Select one enemy unit, excluding vehicle units within 12 inches of the army. Until the start of your next turn, have the move characteristic of models in that unit. Uh, the enemy unit cannot fire overwatch or set to defend. Uh, to select one enemy within 12 inches of the unit. It's always nice to, to have the move characteristic of uh, enemy models because it just royally messes up your opponent. 
and doing that is always good uh, both because it messes them up and also gets in their mind they make more mistakes all right forge worlds of your own so we got rad saturated expansionist data horde reignited or slave system forge world it which is basically this allows you to have a color scheme completely different from any of the forge worlds but also still get all of their abilities all right rad saturated world so here we go you choose one primary and you choose one secondary among the various three so if you didn't like the forge worlds back here and you want to make your own let's see what your options are the first one radiant disciples each time a range attack targets a core unit with this dogma if the attacker uh, is more than 12 inches away subtract one from the strength characteristic of that attack which is pretty nice um since your core units just don't have much toughness so giving it a little bit so if sometimes that would probably be irrelevant but turning it your your wound rolls from three plus to four plus or their wound rolls from three plus to four plus could save a few models uh, luminary suffusion these are one of the possible secondaries that you can add to that primary extreme rad saturation while an enemy unit excluding vehicle units is within three inches of this unit subtract one from the strength and toughness characteristic of models in that unit replace the rad saturation with that uh subtract one from strength and toughness characteristics now what is the difference there because rad saturation has also has already increased it used to be toughness subtract one from toughness but now it's subtract one from strength and toughness anyway so what is this extreme what's the difference uh rad saturation would be Sulfur hounds. Sulfur hounds. Rad saturation. While an enemy unit excluding vehicles is within engagement range. Okay, that's what the difference is. Uh, so within one inch, and now it's increased to within three inches. Within three inches, they have a minus one to strength and toughness. Now, I don't know how big a difference that is, really. I mean, if you're within three inches you're probably fighting them but it's there um all right scarifying weaponry add one to the strength characteristic and improve the armor pen characteristic of radium carbine weapons by one uh for models with this dogma which is really nice i mean if you have vanguard they've got radium carbines generally speaking so improving the strength and the armor pen oh, that's the one i would choose that's the one i would choose for that uh da, 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 core just um yeah that's nice and then machine gods chosen each time a combat attrition test is taken for this unit ignore any or all modifiers nah, i think i'd go with that one so th that would be my choice for the rad saturated forge world you let me know if you would agree or choose something different expansionist forge world primary is accelerated actuators each time a unit with this dogma fights if it made a charge move was charged or perform a heroic intervention this turn then until the fight is resolved the armor pen characteristic of melee weapons in that unit are equipped with is improved by one which is always um which is always nice um forward operations secondary option at the start of the first battle round each skitari core model in your army with this dogma can make a normal move of up to three uh used to be rangers could do a normal move up to three so i guess this is in addition to any other abilities they may have that allow them to make a normal move they cannot end this move more than nine inches of any enemy model so rangers can move up to three inches at the beginning and this would make them now move up to six inches at the beginning uh i'm remembering that great so rangers 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 da, 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 da. 
Love. At the start of the first battle round, models can move up to three. Yeah. So that improves. That improves them in that way. At the start of the first battle round. Um, and since Ranger's Galvanic Rifles have turned into heavy weapons, um, it might be handy to have, th have them able to move six inches forward. Uh, I think it's still 24 inches, so six inches forward might get you the extra range that you need so that you don't have to move with your heavy galvanic uh, rifle anymore. On the other hand, there is a stratagem to turn that heavy galvanic rifle into a rapid fire 2 weapon. Another reason, though, that you might want to get closer to the enemy. So, the next possible secondary is Acquisitive Reach. Add 6 to the ranged characteristic of rifle and carbine weapons that models with this dogma are equipped with. On the other hand, you could just choose that and then they don't have to move. But 6 inches forward could get you towards an objective, I guess. Um, da -da 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 -da, hard to say for me because the carbine weapons also have a 6 inches additional range. And I do use Vanguard a lot, so if I was going to go with that... Um, <laughs> I'm not sure. I kind of like this better than this so far, but you let me know that's just how I play. You let me know how you would play it. Rugged Explorators. Models in this unit do not suffer the penalty to hit rolls incurred for firing heavy weapons in the same turn they moved. A vehicle models in this unit do not suffer the penalty to hit rolls incurred for firing assault weapons in the same turn that their unit has advanced, which is handy for all those Cognus Heavy Stubbers out there, which are Assault 4 now instead of Assault 3. Uh, since your, what, on a Gordoon crawler is going to have eight shots after advanced, maybe you should move it up. Um, or your Scorpius disintegrators with possibly uh, three Cognus Heavy Stubbers, and that's 12 shots, maybe it would be handy to get them to be able to fire without any penalty after advancing. Um, maybe, maybe. All right, Data Horde Forge World. Primary is Magna Bonded Alloys. Each time a vehicle model with this dogma would lose a wound, roll 1d6 on a 6, that wound is not lost. Nice. Not wound or mortal wound, just wound. But hey, it's always nice to feel no pain. Omnitrack Impellers. Add 2 to the move characteristic of Catafron Servitors and Onager Dunecrawler models with this dogma. Catafron Servitors, I can certainly see a nice addition to the 2 movement. Onager Dunecrawlers, I guess if you're using them for something other than shooting, shoot, 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 um, then sure. Or maybe you want to just move them up. They normally move 8 on a Gardoon Crawlers. Maybe you want to move them up to get to that objective a little bit. Alright, uh, and I guess because you can uh, us, you can run, it would be handy to uh, to do so. Do, 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 do. Auto Savant Spirits. At the start of your command phase, each vehicle model in your army uh, with this time ever gains one lost wound, which is certainly nice. Um, but, but each vehicle, yeah. I like that. Models with this dogma whose characters can change as they suffer damage are considered to have double the number of wounds remaining for the purposes of determining what those characteristics are. So I like that. Uh, so you're rerolling, you're gaining a lost wound, Just it's just happening. So that really helps the tech priests um, uh, with their healing. And on a d6, the wound isn't lost in the first place, so tougher vehicles for this one. I like it. Servo-focused auguries. Each time a model with this dogma makes a ranged attack with a cognus weapon, that target that targets the unit within half range, you can re-roll the hit roll. Oh, I do like that too, though. Oh boy. Re-roll the hit roll. At half... 
Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah. With all those rolls, you're going to be getting a fair bit of misses. So being able to reroll the hit roll. And then you've got being able to reroll the hit roll of one. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'd go with tougher, though. Might go with tougher. Rather than that. Because you can reroll the hit roll of one from your dominus. And possibly gain a bonus because of your Doctrina Imperatives, which we're going to get to. So you may not need that. On the other hand, it's nice. I'd, I'd contemplate it. Uh, I might stick with the tougher vehicles, so, so that you cannot survive. Particularly since there's a, a secondary objective where if you keep three of your big, big vehicles alive, you get 15 points at the end of the combat. So keeping your vehicles alive is important to me, since I generally always choose that secondary objective. All right, reigniting, reignited forge world, purgation protocols. Each time a core unit, uh, core model, sorry, with this daga makes a ranged attack on an unmodified wound roll of six. The armor pen characteristic of that attack is improved by one. All right, it's all right. It's all right. Data bleed generators. Each time an enemy model makes a melee attack against a unit with this dogma. If that enemy model made a charge move, was charged or performed heroic intervention this turn, subtract one from the that attack's hit roll. Let me just read that again. Uh, if that made a charge, was charged or performed, uh, subtract one from the attack's... Okay, cool. Uh, I like that. Uh, lots of bonuses generally the enemies might have when they made a charge roll and you just negated one of those bonuses. Subtract one from that attack hit roll. I like it. Uh, associated with that. Makes range attack. Yeah, yeah. I like it. Uh, what are the other options though? Purified data sphere at the, at, uh, add three to the range of the aura abilities excluding the red saturation ability of units with this dogma. I mean, sure. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, engineered nanophages. Each time a melee attack made by a model with this dogma is allocated to a model with a save characteristic of 3 plus or better, the armor pen characteristic of the attack is improved by 1. It's alright. It's alright. I don't know whether I'd choose this one or not. You let me know. I think one of the other ones would be nicer. Of course, I'm still sticking with Stygis 8 at this point. Probably. Must must uh, playtest things now. Playtest things. There's enough difference I have to playtest to see whether the list still works. I think I'm going to be making some changes. And then again, this one is basically uh, you choose one of the main guys. And you get to be one of the main dogmas and, and that's it. So, but allows you to be whatever color you want, I guess. I guess that's the point of it. In the rules, you can be whatever color you want because you're the slave world of the main forge world. Now, stratagems. Yes, I would like to just skip by all of these because they're exactly the same, but no, there's changes. Okay changes and a lot of um things might not make sense because they have we'll get to it we shall get to it okay a zealous congregation two command points adeptus mechanicus stratagem use the stratagem in the fight phase when an electro priest unit from your army is selected to fight until the end of the phase each time a model in that unit makes an attack an unmodified hit roll of six automatically wounds the target, which is nice because you're getting right through their armor. Um, and strength is an issue, and this opponent's toughness is an issue. Now with unmodified hit roll of six, it automatically wounds the target. You've gone past their armor. It's nice. I don't know if it's nice for two command points, um, but it's nice. You let me know. For those who play lots of Electro Priests, Electro Priests, <laughs> Electro Priests abilities, have, they've, they've been nerfed, as the phrase goes. They have been nerfed, so whether you'll still be playing Electro Priests as often as you did is, we'll see. 
just to say, you know, how they used to be for the rest of the game, three plus invuln save. And sometimes you could go crazy and have it a two plus invuln save. Um, that, that cannot happen anymore. They are maximum four plus invuln save for the fulgurite, uh, fulgurite electro priests. So keep that in mind when you're reading through about the electro priests. Dune Striders. Uh, use the stratagem for one command point in your movement phase when an iron strider engine or Cerberus unit from your army is selected to advance. Until the end of this turn, each time that unit advances, do not make any advance roll. Instead, add six to the move characteristic. I like it for one command point. I like it. The type characteristic of heavy weapon models in that unit are equipped with change to assault. I like it. And models in that unit do not suffer the penalty to hit rolls incurred for firing assault weapons in the same turn that the unit has advanced. So I I certainly like that. I would use that, no problem. Called Dune Striders, one command point. Uh, Assassin Constructs, one command point. Use the stratagem in the fight phase when a Sicarian unit from your army is selected to fight. If that unit made a charge move, was charged, or performed a heroic intervention this turn, then until the fight is uh, resolved, add one to the attacks characteristic of models in that unit. Plus one to attacks for one command point. Perhaps, perhaps why not? Electromancer's Wrath. Use a stratagem in your shooting phase. Select one enemy unit, excluding vehicle units, within 12 inches of an Electro Priest unit from your army. Roll 1d6, subtracting one if the unit rolled for the, uh, for, has the character keyword. On a 2 to 5, that unit suffers d uh, unit suffers d3 mortal wounds on a 6, it suffers 2d3 mortal wounds, which is quite nice. Uh, within 12 inches, unit in your shooting phase, it's like one enemy. So it's it's quite nice because the Electro Priest um, probably can be popped in, and then your shooting phase, uh, they will probably be taking d3 mortal wounds. And then they charge in and also do more mortal wounds. So this also seems quite nice to use. Maybe it makes up for the fact that they're going to die so much faster. I like it. Anyway. Uh, machine superiority. One command point. Use this stratagem in the fight phase when a Skatari unit from your army is selected to fight. Uh, until the end of the phase, add one to the strength characteristic of models in the unit. I certainly love all the uh, options of um, increasing Skitar unit strength because they don't got much strength. So that's nice for one command point. Uh, elimination Volley. Use the stratagem in your shooting phase when a Cataphron Servitor's unit from your army is selected to shoot. Until the end of the phase, each time a model in that unit makes an attack that targets the unit within half range, an unidentified hit roll of 6 automatically wounds the target. Getting through their toughness is always nice. It's always nice to have. Data Spike. One command point. Use the stratagem in the fight phase when Adeptus Mechanicus Tech Priest model in your army is selected to fight. Select one enemy vehicle within engagement range of that model. Roll one uh, roll one d6. On a 2 to 5, it suffers d3 mortal wounds. On a 6, that enemy su unit suffers d3 plus 3 mortal wounds. I absolutely like that. No problem. Dealing mortal wounds to vehicles is lovely for one command point. Sure. Uh, Benevolence of the Omnissiah, one command point. Use a stratagem in your fa in any phase when an Adeptus Mechanicus vehicle model in your army would lose a wound as a result of a mortal wound. Until the end of the phase, each time though, uh, each time that model would lose a wound as a result of a mortal wound on a 1d6 on a 4 plus, that wound is not alive. Again, it's nice. I like protecting my vehicles. I like keeping them alive. They are the firepower of the models, and they're also a way for me to get victory points, so keeping them alive for one command point, I'd call it worth it. Though generally I like to keep all my command points back for my neutron lasers. Um, the neutron laser has actually improved from d6 minimum 3 damage to d3 plus 3 
So and I guess I used it for the. Uh, I th I think it's. I may start using command points for other things now with the changes. Um, the neutron laser has gotten better. I used to keep my command points back for that. Now I may have more options. I might have more options now. All right, tech adept, one command point. Use the stratagem at the start of your command phase or at the start of your movement phase. Select one adeptus mechanicus tech priest model in your army. If it is your command phase, the, that model can use its machine focus or awaken the machine ability one additional time. If it is your movement phase, that model can use its master machines ability one additional time that phase. So this has changed, of course, um, by a lot. In that, it used to say that you could even heal or repair models that have already been repaired um, with the Master of Machines ability. That is no longer there. So you cannot double repair your vehicles. Something to keep in mind. You can't double repair your vehicles. So... Um, and you can't, and you can't heal knights at all. So, so, uh, um, a change. Uh, machine focus and awaken the machine. Uh, da, 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 command phase, awaken the machine ability. Uh, what's that anyway? Uh, da, 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 tech priest Dominus, master of machines, lord of the machine. Oh, okay, so, uh, awaken the machine, machine focus. I think that's here you awaken the machine activate advanced protocols now what's this awaken the machine I don't remember what that is awaken self repair mechanisms load of uh, well, we'll get to it. Wake in the machine. I'll just keep it in mind. Anyway. Uh, machine, spirit, or surgent, one command point. Use this stratagem in your command phase. Select one Adeptus Mechanical Mechanicus vehicle model in your army. Until the start of your next command phase, that model is considered to have its full wounds remaining for the purposes of determining what characters on its profile are to use. They regularly do that, and it's still the case. Data blessed auto sermon for two command points. Use a stratagem in your command phase. Select one admech unit from your army within six inches of a friendly tech priest, and select one canticle that has not yet been active from your army until the start of your next command phase. That unit counts uh, that catacle as being active for your army in addition to the current in addition to the currently active one. For two command points, I'm not so certain that would be used. Maybe, but maybe not. Uh, it's in your command phase. I don't, I don't particularly think it would be used, but you let me know if you think otherwise. Archaeotech Specialist, one command point. Use the stratagem before the battle. When you are mustering your army, if your warlord has the Adeptus Mechanicus keyword, select one Adeptus Mechanicus uh, character model in your army and give them one relic. Each relic in your army must be unique, and you cannot use the stratagem to give model two relics. You can only use the stratagem once, unless you're playing Strike Force, which you can use it twice, or Onslaught, which you can use it three times. Generally, I only used it once anyway but yeah i can use it twice for 2000 points or three times for more um so it's they've kept that it's, they've kept the ability to hold a relic which is nice for uh adeptus mechanicus character and they've kept the ability for additional character to have a warlord trait the mechanicus locum i used to use on night um, generally speaking, I didn't really use it otherwise. When I add a knight, I would give the warlord trait that gives them a 4 plus invuln, which is still there, plus it has an additional feature, so we'll get to that. Uh, da -da -da. Right, so this allows, uh, in, in case it wasn't clear, this one, Mechanicus Locum, allows you to give a warlord trait to someone other than your warlord. They are a warlord for the purposes of that warlord trait. 
host of the interm intermediary one command point use this stratagem before the battle when you're mustering your army if your warlord has the adeptus mechanicus keyword select one scutari model in your army that has the word alpha or princeps in their profile and determine one scutari warlord trait for that model that model is only regarded as your warlord for the purposes of the warlord trait each warlord trait in your army must be unique and you cannot use uh, this stratagem to give a model two warlord traits. You can only use it once unless you're a strike force, which it can be twice or an onslaught, which it can be three times. Um, so that's nice. Host of the inter intermediary you can have warlord traits all over the place. The warlord traits have changed a bit, so we'll see now if it's worth having uh, multiple going on. Artifact Totem. Uh, this one is basically the same as this, but instead of a warlord trait, it is a arcanum mechanicum that you can give to an alpha or a princeps, but only these arcanum mechanum, mechanicum, the cage of veridimus, temporocopia, the omniscient mask, and the skull of elder Nicola. Those are the only ones that you could possibly give to one of your alpha or princeps. And bind Herrick override one command point. Use this stratagem at the start of the phase. Select one castle and robot unit from your army and one of the available protocols found on its data sheet. That protocol replaces the one that is currently active. Until the end of the game, that unit's active protocol cannot be changed. You can only use this stratagem once. Which is all right. Oh, oh my gosh, there's so many. Okay. Activation at any cost has changed. One command point. Use the stratagem at the start of the morale phase. Select one objective marker on the battlefield until the end of the phase. Each time an ad mech unit from your army takes a morale test, if that unit is within six inches of that objective marker, it is automatically passed. So no morale tests within six inches of the objective marker at the start of the morale phase. Until the end of that phase. All right, Machine Spirit's Revenge. One command point. Use the stratagem in any phase. When an ad mech vehicle model in your army is destroyed, do not roll to see it explodes automatically. Uh, one command point. Circuitous Assassins. Use the stratagem at the end of your movement phase. Select one Sakarian unit from your army that is wholly within nine, inch nine inches of any battlefield edge. Remove it from the battlefield in your movement in your in reinforcement step of your next movement phase, you can set that unit back up on the battlefield anywhere that is wholly within nine inches of any battlefield edge and more than nine inches away from any me enemy models. If the battle ends and the unit is not on the battlefield, it is destroyed. Uh, he's busy. One command point, deeply sunk talons. Use a stratagem to your, in your opponent's movement phase when an enemy vehicle uh when an enemy unit excluding vehicles is selected to fall back if that enemy unit is within engagement range of any taraxi sterilizer units from your army roll d6 on a two plus until the end of the phase that enemy cannot fall back which is, unless you're incredibly unlucky you should be able to get that enemy not to fall back but if it's selected to fall back, so they make the choice and you go, nah, can't do it. Tactica Oblica, two command points. Use the stratagem in your opponent's charge phase when a Cerberus Raiders unit from your army is selected as a target of a charge. If that, en if that unit is not within engagement range of any enemy units, it can make a normal move. Until the end of that phase, the unit cannot fire overwatch or set to defend. Your opponent can then select new targets for that charge. So... That's cool, isn't it? You've got raiders, your opponents move to charge them, and you just boot it 12 inches out so that they m it makes it impossible for them to charge them for two command points. Uh, would really mess up their plans. <laughs> they go on in, they set up for the charge, they declare your raiders for a charge, and you go two command points out of there! I'm gone! Uh, not nice, but really useful. Crushing weight. 
one command point. Use the stratagem in your charge phase when an Iron Strider engine or Castlin robots unit from your army finishes a charge move. Select one enemy unit within engagement range of that Iron Strider engine or Castlin robots unit and roll 1d6 for each model in that Iron Strider engine or Castlin robots unit that is within engagement range of that enemy unit. For two, for each two plus, the enemy unit suffers one mortal wound. So castle and robots are like two to six, so you could possibly get two to six mortal wounds, um, since it's only two plus. Electroshocked. One command point. Use this stratagem at the start of the fight phase. Select one enemy unit, excluding vehicle or monster units within engagement range of a cult mechanicus core or cult mechanicus character unit from your army until the end of the phase. That enemy unit is not eligible to fight until after all eligible units from your army have done so. Your guys get to go and fight back first, your tech priests do, or your electro priests, or whichever. Booster thrust, one command point. Uh, use this stratagem at the end of your turn. Select one Taraxi unit from your army, remove that from the battlefield, and the re reinforcement steps of your next movement phase. You can set that unit back up on the battlefield anywhere that is more than nine inches away from any enemy model. If that battle ends and that unit is not on the battlefield, it is destroyed. So, uh, flying your tracks here around, making them super annoying. Seismic Bomb. Use the stratagem in your movement phase. One command point. One an Archeo Archaeopter Fusilave model finishes a move. Uh, select one enemy uh, unit that model moved over this phase, excluding titanic units or the units that can fly until the start of your next movement phase. That enemy is shaken. While unit is shaken, have the move characteristic of models in that unit, have advanced rules and charge rules made for that unit. I was thinking it's shaken, it's like, oh, I'm so nervous, but it's actually like they're shaking on the ground. And it's always nice to be able to um, have the move movement of models. Absolutely. Really messes people up, generally speaking. All right. Chain Taser Protocols. One command point. Use the stratagem to the fight in the fight phase when an ad mech unit from your army is selected to fight. Uh, until the end of the phase, each time a model in that unit makes an attack with a taser weapon, an unmodified hit roll of five scores two additional hits. Very specific. Uh, don't use a lot of taser weapons, but now you have bonuses. <laughs> and it's not five up, it's five specifically. Maybe that was a typo, but right now it's just five. Just vibes. Uh, Info slave skull. Two command points. Use the stratagem in the end of the reinforcement step of your opponent's movement phase. Select one admet core unit from your army that is not within engagement range of any enemy units. This that unit can shoot as if it were in your shooting phase, but the models can only target a single eligible enemy unit that is set up as reinforcements this turn and that is within twelve inches of the unit when doing so, which is pretty cool um i, I kind of like that where your opponent gets on in probably nine inches away is at the end of your reinforcement step of your opponent's movement phase yeah uh, your opponent scoots them in nine inches away and your ad mech for two command points shoots them on down could be really could be really useful i like it and since there are uh, within 12 inches, there's all that rapid fire. If it's all that rapid fire, if they're rangers, lots of uh, lots of nastiness. All right, electrofilament countermeasures. Two command points. Use this stratagem at the end of your movement phase. Select one archaeopter model in your army that is equipped with a command uplink and one enemy unit within six inches of that model until the start of the next movement phase the enemy unit is not affected by the aura abilities of other enemy units i mean that could be it's very specific for two command points very specific i don't know how how often that would ever be used maybe but I don't think that's that would be used very often. Uh, one 
command point arc grenades and here is when it gets a little franky uh, use this stratagem in your shooting phase when an adeptus mechanicus arc grenades unit from your army is selected to shoot of course um it is a unit that happens to have arc grenades or up here is a unit that happens to turn into a smoke screen it will now have arc grenades as a keyword for that unit so use this stratagem in your shooting phase when an adeptus mechanicus arc grenades unit from your army is selected to shoot select one enemy vehicle unit within six inches of that unit roll on a d6 on a two to five that vehicle unit suffers d3 mortal wounds on a six that vehicle unit suffers 2d3 mortal wounds which is always nice and the the, the models that have arc grenades are Da, da, da. See Doctrina Assembler, Doctrina Assembler, all the characters have Doctrina Assembler. I'm just showing you as I'm going because it's going to be relevant later. Doctrina Assembler. Doo, 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 doo. <laughs> and Cataphron Breachers, Biker, Biker, no longer uh, infantry. Da, 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 Stock up. Nope. Nope. Do 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 the Taraxi Sky Stalkers. I think they're the only ones that um have the arc grenades. Just the dice, the Sky Stalkers. Pretty certain. So that's a cool additional effect. Uh, yeah. It doesn't seem relevant to anything except for that stratagem for the moment. And look, see the Scorpius Disintegrator has data tether written right on it. So when we get to this, the information that is relevant to data tether, data tether Scorpius Disintegrator, data tether Scorpius Doom Writer. Sidonian Dragoons are Data Tether. Oh shoot. Data Tether for the Iron Strider Balistari. Alright. Back to that. Alright. Now, Incense Exhaust. One command point. Use the stratagem in your opponent's shooting phase when an ad. Adeptus Mechanicus Smokescreen unit from your army is selected as the target of an attack until the end of the phase. Each time an attack is made against that unit, subtract one from that attack's hit roll. So, hard to hit on that individual, which is nice. Enriched rounds, one command point. Use stratagem in your shooting phase when Adeptus Mechanicus unit from your army is selected to shoot. Until the end of the phase, each time a model in that unit makes an attack with a radium weapon, against an enemy unit, excluding vehicle units, an unmight of hit roll of 4 plus automatically wounds the target, which I certainly like. An Adeptus Mechanicus unit is selected to shoot with radium weapons. An unmodified hit roll of 4 plus automatically wounds the target. Again, you're getting past their toughness. And, um, yeah very much like that for one command point I would be using it all the time I now have a new source of definite command points for all my vanguard yeah yes 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 galvanic volley fire two command points use stratagem in your shoot phase when a skatari rangers unit from your army is selected to shoot ah yes until the end of the phase galvanic rifle models in that unit are equipped uh, are equipped with a type characteristic of rapid fire 2. So I'm sure you're aware they were once rapid fire 1, now they are heavy 2. Or for 2 command points they become rapid fire 2, which is a lot of shots when they're within tw 12 inches. A lot of shots. So cool. Uh, overloaded systems. It, it would be a reason to increase your ranger's unit from five models up to more since um, it's just the one unit that does that. Possibly. 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 Uh, overloaded systems. Use the str uh, stratum in any phase. One vehicle 
A model loses one or more wounds as a result of an attack made with an arc weapon by an Adeptus Mechanicus model in your army. If that uh, enemy's vehicle model characteristics can change as it suffers damage for 1d6 on a 2 plus until the start of the next combat, a command phase, that enemy vehicle is considered to have have the number of wounds remaining for the purposes of determining what those characteristics are. If it's Titanic, then this costs two command points. Otherwise, it costs one. All right, sure, sure. Hmm. <laughs> All right, new stuff. Holy orders. Um, if you want to, your tech priest to be a janitor, it's twenty-five points. A logi is thirty-five points. A magi is thirty points, and an artisans is twenty-five points. And you can. Choose any tech priest that you like, but only one can be a janitor, only one can be a logi, only one can be a logi, only one can be a magi, and only one can be an artisan in your army. There are two abilities. One is what you start with, and one is one you can switch to. You don't get both of them, but you can switch to it by using an action with your tech priest. This action, um, activate advanced protocols action at the start of your command phase. This model can start to perform this action. Uh, that action is completed at the start of your next command phase. When it is completed, the initial part of this model's progressive ability stops being active and its advanced part becomes active instead. You let me know if you consider these additions worth the points. So, the first tech priest model possibility is uh, right they also get these abilities which is the same throughout uh, once per battle if this model is on the battlefield when you use uh, adeptus mechanicus battle stratagem and this one is strategic ploy stratagem and this one is epic deed stratagem and this one is whoop, uh, war gear stratagem. That's the difference between them. You can have uh, reduced the, com the command cost, the command point cost of the stratagem by one command point. Note that the command point cost is only reduced by one command point for the use of that stratagem. Any future usage is cost the normal amount of command points. So for once per battle, and using one stratagem once. Now, the progressive ability of the janitor starts with biochemical aggression. In your command phase, if this part is active for the model, select one friendly uh, Forge World Core or Forge World Cataphon Servitors unit within six inches of this model. Until the start of your next command phase, each time a model in that unit makes a melee attack, an unmodified hit roll of six automatically wounds the target. Again, this is pretty awesome. It gets bypasses. Um, uh, the toughness of the model, which is always very useful. And it's going to happen all the time for that one unit. So, handy. Uh, or you can turn it into hyper-cybernetic hyper physiology in your command phase. If this part is active for this model, select one uh, forge, one friendly forge world, cataphron servitors, or friendly or forge world servitors unit within six inches of this model until the start of your next man phase each time a model in that unit would lose a wound roll 1d6 on a six that wound is not lost so it can turn in servitors feel uh, yeah, to have feel no pain now i kind of like this better than this but i don't play a lot of servitors so if you like servitors a lot then go for it Louis ability scriptures. This one was the free one, one less command point for strategic ploy stratagems. One ton. Uh, initial part predicted barrage in your command phase. If the uh, if this part is active for this model, select one friendly forge or core unit within six inches of this model. Until the start of your next command phase, each time an attack 
with an armor pen characteristic of minus one or two is allocated to a model in that unit. The attack has an armor pen, uh, pen characteristic of zero instead, which could be very useful. Uh, it could be very useful. Flaws of the foe in your command phase. If this part is active for this model, select one friendly uh, Forge World Core or Forge World Cataphon Servitor's unit within six inches until the start of your command phase, next command phase. Each time a model in that unit makes a ranged attack, the target does not receive the benefits of cover against that attack. Um, also useful. Uh, da -da -da -da, which one you would want to use? I, th I think I, again, pr prefer the initial part to the advanced part, but I guess that really depends on who you're facing and how much benefit of cover they're, uh, they're using. Now, the Magi. Uh, the initial part is predatory programming. In your command phase, if this part is active for the for the model, select one friendly Forge World Core unit within six inches of this model until the start of your next command phase. Add two to advance rolls made for that unit. Right? That's all right. Um, this, select one for the, yeah. Why not? Uh, overloaded safeguards in your command phase. If this part is active for the model, select one friendly Forge World Core unit. Uh, within six inches of this model until the start of your next command phase. Each time a model in that unit makes a ranged attack, an unmodified hit roll of six scores one additional hit. Okay, that's nice too for certain. You've got lots of dice uh, going on, so for a core unit, uh, that's that's nice as well. Uh, plus 30 points for that, initially that, and then that. Perhaps, perhaps, perhaps. Perhaps. Uh, artisans. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Initial part is enhanced biomechanical interface. At the end of your movement phase, if this part is active for the model, select one friendly Forge World Core or Forge World Cataphron Servitors unit within six inches of this model until the start of your next movement phase. That unit is eligible to charge and shoot in a turn in which it fell back. Very techy. But if it does, do but if it does so, each time a model in that unit makes a ranged attack, subtract one from that attack's hit roll. Still, um, techie. Handy. Do -do 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 -do. Advanced part. Exquisite calibration. In your command phase, if this part is active for this model, select one friendly core unit within six inches of the model until the start of your next command phase. Each time a model in that unit makes a ranged attack, Add one to the strength characteristic of that attack. Wow, I really like the artisans. And the artisan is only 25 points. <laughs> 25 points to add to a tech priest. If you have the extra points, I'd say, why not? Why not? Okay. Warlord traits. They have changed. Um, yeah. Okay. We have six of them for Tech Priests and six of them for Skitari. So for Tech Priests, Emotionless Clarity. In your command phase, select one friendly uh, Cultus Mechanicus core unit within six inches of this Warlord until the start of your next command phase. That unit is eligible to charge in a turn in which it fell back. Sounds lovely. Now, I'm mostly familiar with Masterwork Bionics and Necromechanics. Uh, necromechanic, both of which have changed. Um, so, but that seems like it's a, a nice one for sure. Uh, for anything that uh, has bonuses on charge, and of course, uh, if it's your turn, uh, your opponent is going to get to fight first unless you charge. So this is a great way to uh, allow yourself to make certain that you can fight first in the fight phase. So very handy. And remember, if you have a, another Warlord trait for your Tech Priest, you can give this to a separate uh, Tech Priest um, using the using the stratagem that uh, that we read earlier. So 
that's handy. Masterwork Bionics. Now, Masterwork Bionics used to be just a 4 plus invuln. Now it has two things. It's a 4 plus invuln save. Uh, and each time an attack is allocated to the war this warlord, subtract one from the damage characteristic of that attack to a minimum of one, which is very nice. Masterworks Bionics have increased. Perhaps I, well, I'll certainly still use it. Um, now, I used to just use it on my knights. Uh, knights, knights are changing since you can't actually heal knights unless you're Belisarius Call now. We'll get into that as we get to the Master of the Machines ability, but uh, um, this does allow for uh, me to play a knight even more so. So, yeah, I like it is improved. First hand field testing. When you select this warlord trait, select one weapon this warlord is equipped with, excluding well relics. Add one to the strength and damage characteristic of that weapon. It's nice. Uh, necromechanic, the big bonus. Each time this warlord uses its Master of the Machines ability, the model being repaired regains three lost wounds instead of D3. Uh, the necromechanic used to be plus one uh, to healing abilities. Now it's just Master of the Machines ability regains three wounds instead of d3 which is perfect I very much like that i will absolutely be using it thank you i shall do so four uh three wounds all the time is nice okay carto grammatist i really wish i could do like necromaticatic on everyone now but of course it maxes this out only being able to use one of these you cannot use more than one necromechanic oh well but i can use cartogrammatist i think when you select this warlord trait select one friendly forge world cult mechanicus core unit from your army that unit gains the following ability orbital teleportarium during deployment you can set this unit in orbit instead of setting it on the battlefield if you do so then in the movement uh, reinforcement step of one of your if you do so in the reinforcement step of one of your movement phases, you can s set this unit anywhere on the battlefield that is more than nine inches away from any enemy models. And this is, a, if you were using Lucius, this is an addition to all your other teleportation things. It'd be three different teleportations. You'd be going around crazy, deep striking nonsense. Or if you aren't using it, then you have one option to do so. Now between any of the ones I've seen so far, I'm sticking with Necromechanic for my Warlord. But, um, um, but it's handy to have these other options, and I may, I, this, my second one would be this, to put on a big baddie. Unless, of course, I can't do that anymore, but seems like I can. Um, but teleportation is always nice, and of course I have to think about how I have to change it up anyway, since the other... The other changes may require some rethinking. But I'm still using Necromechanic. That's happening. Supervisory Radiance. At the start of the fight phase, select one friendly Forge World Cult Mechanics core unit within nine inches of this Warlord until the start of the next fight phase. Each time a model in the unit makes a melee attack, you can reroll the hit roll. That's very nice. Um, you reroll the... Oh, the Belisarius Call rerolls the hit roll, and now it's... Um, Anyone who rerolls the hit roll, but it's only fight phase. Uh, still, for uh, for more relevant uh, cult mechanicus, it's Electro Priest. Rerolling the hit phase. If you have a warlord within nine inches, that's that could be very crucial to helping those poor Electro Priests get back some of their strength. Multitasking Cortex. In your command phase, select one friendly Forge World's Guitar Core unit within nine inches of this Warlord, or select one friendly Forge World Core Data Tether unit on the battlefield. Until the start of your next command phase, if that unit is performing an action, it can make ranged attack without the action failing, which is very nice. Um, actions, there's multiple actions to, uh, for your secondary objectives for winning a game uh, that is required to gain your victory points and use being able to uh, do ranged attacks without the action failing is lovely so maybe you would want to choose this one battle sphere up uh, battle sphere uplink in your command phase select one friendly forge world Skitari core unit within nine inches of this warlord 
or select one friendly Forge World Core Data Tether unit on the battlefield until the start of your next command phase. Models in that unit do not suffer the penalty to hit rolls incurred for firing heavy weapons in the same turn that they moved, or assault weapons in the same turn that they advanced. Also very nice. Mm -hmm. Also very nice. Da, 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 da. But you need a Skatari character. Unless. Unless that. Uh, enriched rounds. Uh, unless this says Warlord. Use a stratagem when you're mustering a warlord. Uh, Deptus Mechanicus character and give them a relic. This must be a relic they can have, darn. Alright, so he must have a Skitari character on the battlefield to do this. Um, can't only have tech priests. Alrighty. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, uh... Does it say character? It probably says character. Yeah, it says character. So I'm trying to cheat. Alright. Uh, just trying to advance it as far as possible. Programmed retreat. If your command phase, uh, in your command phase, select one friendly Forge World Skatari core unit within nine inches of this warlord, or select one friendly Forge World core data tether unit on the battlefield until the start of your next command phase. That unit is eligible to shoot in a turn in which it fell back. Lovely. That's always lovely. Um... Yes. Yes, it is. On the other hand, I could have my warlord as one of as a Skitari, and then Necromechanic as an extra Tech Priest, Dominus, I don't know. Lots of things. Lots of things to think about. Archived engagements in your command phase. Select one friendly Forge World Skitari core unit within nine inches of this warlord, or select one friendly for Forge World core data tether unit on the battlefield until the start of your next command phase. If that unit is within engagement range of any enemy units at the start of the fight phase, it can fight first. That's quite nice. Uh, how long does it go for in your command phase until the start of your next command phase? Um, so command phase, that's, yeah, that's, that's lovely. Uh, yup, 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 yup. You have to decide which one you're going to do. On the other hand, you could have two Skatari warlords and have both, a couple of these things in effect. A fire point telemetry cache. In your command phase, select one friendly Forge World Skatari core unit within nine inches of this warlord, or select one friendly Forge World core data tether unit on the battlefield until the start of your next command phase. Each time a range attack is allocated to a model in that unit, it is treated as receiving the benefits of light cover against that attack. Uh, which is um, a plus one to saving throws. If that model is entirely on or within a terrain feature and has the infantry keyword, add an additional one to any armor saving throw made against that attack. Okay, cool. Da -da 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 -da. If you're in, you get plus two to saving throws. Do -do -do -do. Start your next command phase. Core. Yeah. I'm not certain if it, I would choose it over other ones, but um, maybe. Maybe. Eyes of the Omnissiah. In your command phase, select one friendly Forge World Skatari core unit with nine, within nine inches of the Warlord, or select one friendly Forge World core data tether unit on the battlefield. Until the start of your next command phase, you can reroll advanced rolls and charge rolls made for that unit. All right, yes. Yeah, that could be if you have got a really, a really important a bunch of dudes to get inside, uh, into combat with the opponent be very handy da, 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 relics relics have changed i know for sure because mine are gone and then we've got some that can be given to a an alpha or a precept which was the skull of elder nicola the omniscient mask the cage of veridimus and tempor copia those 
four when we get to them. All right, and yeah, these are like lots of differences. Um, the uncreator gauntlet improves a power fist. The raiment of the techno martyr. Each time the bear would lose a wound, roll one d6 on a five plus. That wound is not lost. So that's all right. And it also has in your command phase select one friendly forge world core unit within three inches of this model until the start of your next command phase. Each time a model in that unit makes a ranged attack, you can ignore any or all hit, roll, or ballistic skill modifiers. I'm curious what you can ignore any oh ballistic skill modifiers. So you um the negative uh, ballistic skill. Uh, given by the Doctrina Imperatives. <clears throat> that will be a negative to a ballistic skill, so you could ignore that. That's handy. Uh, the Skull of Elder Nicola. At the start of your shooting phase, roll 1d6 for each enemy vehicle unit within 12 inches of the bear. On a 2 to 3, that unit suffers 1 mortal wound. On a 4 to 5, it suffers d3 mortal wounds. On a 6, that unit suffers 3 mortal wounds. And if you're going to be giving it to your alpha, who could possibly get in there a lot. 1d6 for each enemy vehicle unit is pretty cool. At the start of your shooting phase. Uh, yeah, and uh, that's kind of like continuing to shoot, even in combat, though if you're against a vehicle, you might have a little bit of uh, difficulty since so they'll still be shooting unless they're blast weapons. Start of your shooting phase. It's on your turn, though. <laughs> within 12 inches. Oh, cool. So it's before you dive in there too, you could do uh, up to three mortal wounds. Uh, their purgation's purity model equipped with a radium serpenta is improved. Exemplar's eternity. Uh, Skitari martial only. The bear service called uplink is replaced with uh, with while friendly Forge World Skatari core units are within six inches of this model, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, reroll a hit roll of one and a reroll of wound roll of one. I think it used to be just reroll of wound roll of one, so now you have reroll hit rolls of one and wound rolls. So that is that's nice. Phospho Phoenix uh, improves the Phosphor Serpenta. Well, who is this? Sparse. Something special. Target exposure. While well, a friendly Forge World core unit is within six inches of this model, each time a model in that unit makes a ranged attack against an exposed unit, that target does not receive the benefits of dense cover against that attack. Okay. Uh, Patter Cogtooth improves the Omniscient Axe. Anzian Pseudogenitor improves the. Oh, this is a one where you can. Have it equipped in addition to the other profiles. Okay, so it is a melee weapon, has a plus two strength, AP minus one, one damage, and each time the bear fights, it makes 3d3 additional attacks with this weapon. Well, that's nasty. Cool. The Omniscient Mask. The bear gains the following ability Aura. While a friendly Forge World Skatari core unit is within six inches of this model, each time a model in that unit makes a melee attack, unmodified hit roll of six scores one additional hit. Well, that seems quite nice for an alpha. Uh, melee attack. Do, 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 do. Or precepts. Who would I use it on? I'm not sure. It's melee attack. I don't use a lot of melee attacks, other than Sulphur Hounds. That's about it. I just shoot. But you let me know. Who would you use the Omniscient Mask on uh, to aid what Skatari Core unit? It's Skatari Core, so it's not Electro Priest. You'd want a lot of attacks for it to be worthwhile to use it, though. Uh, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Sonic Reaper model equipped with a Transonic Cannon only, so it improves the Transonic Cannon. Temporocopia. At the start of the fight phase, you can select one enemy unit within three inches of the bearer. That unit is not eligible to fight this phase until all, after all eligible units from your army have done so. That is lovely, actually. At the start of the fight phase, so yours and his, I would absolutely join that one out. The Cage of Veridimus. Each time the bearer hits an enemy unit, excluding vehicle units with a melee attack, until the end of the phase that unit is electroshocked. Each time a model is 
and an electroshock unit makes an attack, subtract one from that attack. Such roll, nice. Uh, melee attack. Yeah, that's nice too. Lot is nice too. Subtract one from the attack hit roll. Uh, between subtracting one from the attack hit roll and being the first to fight, uh, I'd probably go with the first to fight, just because if your unit is not one that can kill everything that it gets into combat with on the on your turn, or if you're dealing with more than one unit coming in and attacking one unit all at the same time, then you'd go for that, and then it would be great for it to be eligible, not eligible to fight, um, because you'd be able to kill as many as you possibly could, and then on their turn, because they didn't charge, you'd be able to kill as many as you possibly could, so I like that one better than this one. That's my thoughts on it. Chapter approved rules. So these are secondary objectives, and uh, I like them for sure. Um, I like these two better, and uh, these are brand new, and um, I think you'll like them as well. And I'm just moving by them. I'm moving by the crusade rules. So I'm right, moving by it. Moving by it all. Except for the, there's my auto caduceus of Ark and Land. It's in crusade. I have to uh, crusade it now. Um, I think I will be trying out crusade. Uh, for sure. I want to go on a crusade. Okay. Bum, ba -dum, ba -dum, bum, 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 bum.